My name is Sanjay Gupta and I'm a cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to make a short video on the subject of alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy. What is cardiomyopathy? Cardio means heart, myo refers to muscle, and pathy comes from the word pathos and literally means suffering. Hence cardiomyopathy refers to weakness of the heart muscle. Alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy therefore refers to weakness of the heart muscle caused by excessive alcohol intake. In this condition, the heart becomes enlarged and weak. It is therefore described as a dilated cardiomyopathy, dilated meaning bigger, cardiomyopathy meaning weakened heart muscle. This is just a description of the heart's appearance and many other conditions can also cause a similar appearance, such as viruses, drugs, or genetic factors. Therefore, we use the term alcohol-induced dilated cardiomyopathy when excessive alcohol intake is believed to be the cause of the weak heart muscle. Now, the definition of alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy is as follows. The patient has to have a heavy alcohol consumption of more than 80 grams of alcohol daily over the past five years. And alongside this, you observe a dilated and weak heart. The heart size is more than two standard deviations above normal. And the function of the heart is reduced. This is um, measured by something called the ejection fraction. So the left ventricular ejection fraction is less than 50%. I'll talk about this later. Other causes of dilated cardiomyopathy, such as coronary artery disease, high blood pressure, viral infections, have to be excluded before a diagnosis of alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy is made. So you basically need a history of excessive alcohol intake, you need a weak, dilated heart, and you need to have excluded other causes of this before making the diagnosis of alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy. Now, a standard drink um, of alcohol contains 10 grams of alcohol. This is equivalent to, um, so 100 mils of wine will contain 10 grams of alcohol, 300 mils of beer, 40 mils of spirits. So in essence, if you're consuming about eight such drinks a day over the long term, you are at risk of developing alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy. In patients who drink at this level over a period of five years, the prevalence of alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy can range between 23 to 47%. So not everyone who drinks this uh, amount will develop a cardiomyopathy, but there is quite a high prevalence or high incidence of cardiomyopathy developing in heavy drinkers. It's important to uh, appreciate that some populations may be more vulnerable than others. In particular, Asian patients are more likely to suffer from aldehyde dehydrogenase 2 deficiency, uh, which is why they sometimes people flush when they drink alcohol. This leads to the accumulation of acetaldehyde. This is a toxic metabolite of alcohol. So Asian patients more likely to suffer this and therefore more susceptible to alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy. There is also a gender imbalance, with men being more frequently affected than women. In fact, the ratio of men to women admitted to the hospital for alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy is about 9 to 1. This may be due to several factors, including underreporting of heavy alcohol consumption in women, as well as physiological factors like lower alcohol tolerance in women. Is all alcohol bad? Well, a few years ago, it was believed that low to moderate alcohol consumption was beneficial and that alcohol was only harmful if taken in excess, such as between more than 7 to 14 drinks per week. However, it is now thought that light to moderate drinking is often associated with generally a healthier lifestyle, higher socioeconomic status, more active family and social life, and this lifestyle overall may be more favourable rather than just the fact that drinking the alcohol uh, at a, a, a modest level is uh, beneficial. 
There's been a combined analysis of 83 studies which included over half a million patients which suggested that alcohol consumption exceeding 100 grams per week is associated with a higher risk of heart failure and lower life expectancy. So undoubtedly you don't have to drink uh, 80 grams per day uh, even if you're drinking that level, you know, 100 grams per week, you are more at risk of developing problems. How does alcohol damage the heart? Alcohol can be directly toxic to heart muscle cells. In experiments on mice, what we find is by, when you get mice to binge drink, um, uh, this leads to mitochondrial dysfunction and contractile impairment of the heart after 10 days. So this is in mouse models, mouse experiments. In humans, it's possible to see reversible changes by cardiac magnetic resonance as soon as, even after 24 hours of excessive alcohol intake. So um, acute drinkers seem to have uh, something called a higher T2 signal intensity on MRI compared to non-drinkers. T2 signals go up, they're more intense when there is swelling or inflammation or water in the cells. And um, this has been shown on MRI studies. So even 24 hours after an excessive um, intake of alcohol, you can see these changes in the heart, but they tend to be reversible. Excessive alcohol exposure can also um, predispose patients to hypertension and therefore is a risk factor for strokes and heart attacks. We talked about acetaldehyde previously. The primary toxic metabolite of alcohol is acetaldehyde, which is very toxic to heart muscle cells. It causes mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative stress, and disrupts calcium availability for the effective contraction of heart muscle. Fortunately, we have an enzyme in our liver called acetaldehyde dehydrogenase that breaks down acetaldehyde into acetate, which is less toxic. However, if there is a deficiency of acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, as is common in some Asian populations, uh, then acetaldehyde can accumulate in the bloodstream and then to heart cells causing muscle damage, heart muscle damage. Genetics also plays a role. Remember I said that not everyone who drinks to that level will develop a cardiomyopathy. So maybe the people who do develop it are in some way more vulnerable, maybe they're genetically more vulnerable. And um, this is recognized in the literature that uh, people who develop alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy may be genetically more vulnerable. A study compared the genetic makeup of patients who developed alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy with those who drank heavily but did not develop the condition. And it found genetic polymorphisms in 57% of the group that developed the cardiomyopathy compared to only 7% in the group that did not. There was also an interesting study which looked at patients with uh, HER2, HER2 positive breast cancer who were treated with a drug called trastuzumab and they had something called the HER2 ILE uh, slash VAL polymorphism uh, and if they had that polymorphism and they drank more than 80 grams a week then they were at an increased risk of cardiotoxicity so again Genetics uh, plus increased exposure uh, equals increased risk. Of course, there are alcohol patients who consume excessive alcohol are also vulnerable for other uh, to other comorbidities that can then affect their heart badly. Uh, so, patients who drink excessive alcohol are um, more prone to malnutrition. Uh, with deficiencies in vitamins like vitamin B1, folate and magnesium, and that can be harmful to the heart. Uh, excessive cobalt in alcohol was also implicated in causing cardiomyopathy. A condition called um, Quebec drinker's cardiomyopathy was related to excessive cobalt supplementation in beer. Thankfully, this was identified and now cobalt is removed from the brewing process. Uh, alcohol excess can also cause high blood pressure, which increases the strain on the heart. It increases the risk of atrial fibrillation, which if left untreated, and particularly if left untreated and is left fast, can uh, lead to heart failure. It's also important to know that alcohol causes liver damage, which can then lead to the production of inflammatory cytokines that can contribute to cardiac damage.
how does the patient with alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy present? Um, sometimes patients have no symptoms at all. Other times they may present with heart rhythm disturbances such as atrial fibrillation. In fact, atrial fibrillation is seen more commonly in alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy compared to other forms of cardiomyopathy. Now, some patients may be symptomatic, so they may complain of progressive breathlessness, exercise intolerance, fatigue, weakness, and leg swelling. How is the diagnosis made? Well, the diagnosis is usually made when we observe a dilated, weak heart and cannot find any other cause to explain this, aside from a history of excessive alcohol intake. There may be other clues as well, such as signs of liver disease on blood tests or evidence of malnutrition. What is the treatment and the prognosis? The prognosis is highly dependent on whether the patient can withdraw from alcohol or not. People who continue to drink at the same level have a much higher mortality compared to other forms of dilated cardiomyopathy. However, if patients stop drinking or even significantly reduce their intake, then both their prognosis and heart function can improve. In one study, there was a chap called Hasseger and he found that mortality in patients who had reduced their alcohol intake was 6.1% compared to 50.8% in those who did not abstain. So abstention is best, but even if you can reduce your alcohol intake, then the prognosis gets better. Whilst the heart is weak, patients should adopt a healthy lifestyle, pay attention to nutrition, reduce smoking, get gentle exercise and cut down on stress levels. The good news is there are some excellent heart failure medications that can improve heart function, quality of life and prognosis. These include uh, Entresto, beta blockers, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists such as spironolactone and SGLT2 inhibitors. These medications tend to work synergistically so they should all be prescribed together if the patient can tolerate them. I, you want to give a little bit of each medication rather than give too much of one and not give any of the others. Is there anything on the horizon for alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy? Well, future therapeutic approaches may involve reducing acetaldehyde levels. There is a compound called ALDA1, which can accelerate acetaldehyde metabolism and therefore may become an important therapy in the future. Additionally, mitochondrial CAMK2 has been linked to ethanol-induced cell death and inhibiting this may be a potential therapeutic approach. So, in conclusion, alcohol in excessive quantities can be harmful to the heart, but it is never too late to recognize this and abstaining or even reducing alcohol intake may help reverse the damage. I hope you found this useful. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for supporting me and Bluebell and the Your Cardiology channel over the years. Uh, we recently hit uh, 500,000 subscribers and uh, this is all down to you, the kindness, the love, the time that you give watching us. Um, we promise to continue working really hard at empowering patients in an increasingly commercially motivated and protocol driven medical world. If you find the content useful, it would mean a lot if you share the videos with anyone who may benefit. Thank you once again.